Hello and welcome back. So now that we've managed to choose our SSH config file dynamically based on the definition of our host OS variable, we now need to make our interpreter dynamic. Unfortunately, this isn't as simple as interpolation syntax replacements. So we need to look at a better way. In this lesson, we're going to utilize conditional expressions to choose the interpreter we need dynamically based on the definition of the host OS variable. So let's get started. So what I mean by interpreter, of course, is this interpreter here, the one that determines what interpreter is going to be used to interpret our SSH config script. And if it's Windows, it's PowerShell. And if it's Linux, it's Bash. And as you can see, we can't just replace it like we did up here. That was very simple. And of course, there are ways we could define this. But you know what? Since we know that it's only one or the other based on the host OS, I don't want to create a new variable just to do this. I'd much rather just continue using the same host OS variable. So if you take a look at conditionals here, conditional expressions, you can see basically you provide a condition, question mark, then you see the true value or the false value. So if host OS is Windows, the true value would be PowerShell and the false value could be Bash, for instance. So let's go ahead and just hop in and take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to run the Terraform console and we're going to pass in a variable definition. Of course, we have it defined all over the place up here in our files, but we're just going to define it right here in line instead of messing with those files right now. So var equals host underscore OS equals Windows, for me anyway, and enter. Let's verify var dot host OS Windows. Perfect. So what we want to do is say if var dot host OS equals, and we're using two equal signs here because we're not setting this, we are checking for equality, Windows, then First, we'll just say PowerShell, and of course, this isn't the interpreter we'll use exactly, but just for the sake of using this now, this will be easier. Or Bash, just like so. As you can see, we got PowerShell. Now, if var.hostOS is Linux, and we run this same exact command again, PowerShell, Bash, then we get bash. So that's pretty straightforward. So what we want is we actually want this command and the other command, which of course I've also provided, and we're going to use those instead of just PowerShell and bash. So we'll say var.hostOS is Windows. Then what we want is in brackets here, PowerShell comma dash command, just like so, and close that bracket. Or if it's not Windows, if this is false, then we just use bash, comma, dash C, just like so. Let's hit enter. And perfect. Even though the formatting's a little wonky there, this will be perfectly fine. So go ahead and just copy this directly. Control C that. And for interpreter, I'm just going to paste that in, just like so. And that's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and exit the console there. And let's go up to our terraform.tfvars. Make sure that is set to your OS. I'm going to go ahead and change this to Windows since that is the OS I am using. Variables.tf, the default is Windows, which is fine because terraform.tfvars is going to override it anyway. So if that's different, that is perfectly fine, but you may want to change this as well. And then once again, within our main TF, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and run a Terraform plan. All right, everything looks like it went through fine. So let's go ahead and apply it. Terraform apply, auto approve, and hopefully by the time our instance is fully initialized, we will be able to SSH into it just like we were able to before. So go ahead and run this Terraform apply. Pause the video and come on back whenever your EC2 instance is all green. All right, everything has come back just fine. We're running and all green. So let's go ahead and see if this new IP address is available for SSH. I'll actually take a quick peek, 34.219 for this one. 
So I will click on View Command Palette. I've already got Remote SSH ready to go. And there it is, 34.219.246.58. Let's go ahead and see if it works. This is a Linux machine. I would like to continue, yes. And everything is looking absolutely fantastic. We once again have our development environment all ready to go, but this time it's dynamic based on the host OS that we're using. So go ahead and mark this lesson complete. Come on back to the next one and let's continue the course.